Good afternoon, welcome to our homestead. I'm excited for this video today. I have a great project for you, and that is installing one of these EG4 plug and cool mini split units. The nice thing about these is that they are true DIY units. They come with pre vacuumed lines that you can connect yourself, and they run directly off of solar panels, so directly off of DC power. So if you are in an off grid cabin somewhere, and you are in desperate need of some cool air, this is the way to go. For us out here in our barn, where we want to do some special food storage, we need something to cool this place down. And we're quite a distance from our main array. So the nice feature about this is running directly off those solar panels, or it can also run off of AC power. Okay, let's show you how to install it. First step, we are on the exterior of our barn and we are going to install the outdoor unit. And we're gonna do it on top of two solid concrete pad blocks right behind me. That's how I've installed all of the mini splits on our house and it works perfectly. We're gonna anchor it to those blocks with these sleeve anchors. So I've got a masonry bit here and I've got a piece of tape on the depth that I want to drill. I'm gonna just mark the holes and attach it to the blocks. These aren't too terribly heavy, so you shouldn't have a problem moving it into place. If you are interested in getting one of these to cool off your cabin or your home, I have a link for it in the description below the video. And right next to it, I have a coupon code for $50 off. Make sure you have everything level and that the unit is the proper distance away from the wall. Also make sure you have enough clearance on both sides of the unit. Okay y'all, we're back inside and it's time to mount this indoor head unit. Now in order to do that, we just need to take this bracket off the head unit itself and it just comes off with this one screw. What we are going to do is choose the proper position on the wall, get this level, and then we are gonna attach this to the wall just like this. Now for the head unit, you need about six inches on the top and five inches clear on each side for this to have the proper ventilation and circulation of air around it. But this right here, this circle, is the most important piece. This is where our refrigerant lines and drain line are gonna go through the wall outside. That's why I'm gonna hang it first like this, drill my holes where they need to be, and then I'll take the cardboard back off the wall. Make sure that the bracket itself is aligned perfectly with the picture on the template, and make sure the top of the bracket is perfectly level. If it's not level, you could have drainage issues with the condensate line. What I'm gonna do is put a screw right in the center of where our hole to the outside needs to be. I'll back that screw back out. The first bit I'm going to use is just a regular drill bit that is long enough to get through the entire wall. Then I can use my hole saw after that. Now make sure when you are drilling this to drill at a slightly downward angle to the outside. That's extremely important for the condensate line to be able to drain properly on the way out. You don't want anything draining back toward the interior head unit. Okay, here's our next step. These are the refrigerant lines on the head unit itself. We need to gently bend these out to a 90 degree angle. Now they've got these springs on them, but still be extremely gentle with these when you're bending them out. Now you can see our condensate line is on one side, but our refrigerant lines are on the other. We need to take this condensate line off and switch it to the other side. There's a little rubber plug right in here. Take that out and there is a little clip on the bottom of this. Unclip it and then push it on to the hose adapter on this side. The next step is to stand this up on end open this front cover, and then there's a little plastic panel right here. Remove this panel, and that's gonna expose the terminal block to connect our control and power wire to. Now, it's gonna be a challenge, but you're gonna to have to feed this end through the back, poke it up through the front, and connect the numbers with the correct numbers on here and the ground with the correct ground. There's one, two, three, and your ground. And that corresponds to the one, two, three in ground right here on the terminal block. 
It's always good to have a magnet in this situation because if you lose this screw down below, it's gonna be a problem. And you have to take the screw on the ground out because this has a full ring terminal on it, unlike the other ones, which are slip-ins. Before we hang our head unit on the wall and run all of our lines out of this hole, we need to protect the hole. I'm gonna protect it with this Schedule 40 PVC pipe that I can just put through the wall like this, but I need to measure how thick the wall is. And the reason we wanna use a pipe like this going through the wall is because we have that condensate line. If that line builds up any moisture on it, you don't want that inside of your wall. You want it protected. Now, depending on what kind of structure you are in, your outside cladding or siding may be different. Ours is a metal sided barn. So I may need what's called a boot on the outside of that to protect this. Let's get this measured and cut. So I've run everything through the protective pipe already and snugged it up to the head unit. What I need to do now is feed this power cord through first, and then we'll get everything else run through. Make sure when you're doing this, your condensate line stays on the bottom of the hole. Now I have this rotated right now, but I will keep it in place as I rotate it and make sure that condensate line stays on the bottom. Now we're back outside at the outdoor unit and we need to connect the refrigerant lines. We've got a 3 8 inch line and a quarter inch line. Those will match up to the 3 8 and quarter inch line on the outdoor unit and also the head unit. But you need to buy one really important thing, and that is this. It's called Nylog, and it is four connections for refrigerant lines. It is probably the best gasket and thread sealant out there, and a friend of mine who owns an HVAC company told me, use this and nothing else. I'll put a link for it in the description below. So now we're gonna have to connect these together, and you're gonna have to straighten portions of this out, but be extremely careful when you do that. Because if you put a kink in here or a bend that's too sharp and it causes a leak, then they are completely useless. So take your time and go slow. We're gonna match up our 3 8 inch lines. We're gonna take off these caps. We're gonna be using two crescent wrenches and we are going to use our nylog on these threads. Make sure when you're doing this, you do not get any dirt in this connection. Now this is something new I hadn't seen on the Mr. Cool units. They have these little cotter pins in here and you kind of put them through and it locks everything in place. That's really unique. Now you can wrap these up with the included extra pipe insulation and continue to wrap your lines together. Keep in mind though, if you're gonna use a line cover like this, then it's gonna be really a challenge to smash all of it down to a size that's gonna fit inside one of these. We've got our lines connected above. Now we're down here at the side of the unit. We're gonna remove both of these covers. The bottom one is for the refrigerant lines and the top one is for the electrical. And down here we have the same. We've got a 3 8 inch connection and a quarter inch connection. Just connect them to the proper one. It's really easy. For the electrical connection, we have our two MC4 connectors right here, our positive and negative. And we are gonna be running in our power line that came in from the head unit through this bottom gland right here, through this cable clamp, and connect it exactly how you did the inside one. So for us, we're gonna run this on DC power only, and eventually we will connect in the AC line from the inside of the barn. But I wanna see how this does just running off the sun. Now obviously, I'm not gonna get any cooling at night, but that's not that big of a deal for me right now. So just like the inside, we've got our ground, which goes to the green screw over here, our one, two, and three, to the one, two, and three. And then when we do run in our 115 volt uh, AC line, we've got a line and a neutral right here, and then we'll also ground it. So I got ahead of myself a few minutes ago and I wrapped that before I checked the connections. You always wanna have some soapy water to spray on your connections to check them to see if there's any leaks before you wrap everything up. Now that I've done that, I can rewrap these lines and then I'm gonna use the sealing clay or sealing putty 
and I'm gonna put it inside of our pipe and kind of around the hole just to seal things up. At the bottom of the outdoor unit where we've connected our lines, there are these two caps, one on each of the lines. And this takes a four millimeter Allen wrench. And what that does is that's going to release the refrigerant from inside of the outdoor unit into the lines and the head unit. Make sure you check everything down here with the soapy water also. Then when I put these brass caps back on, I'm gonna use Nylog on these threads as well. Now we can let the refrigerant into the lines, make sure there's no leaks, and then we're gonna connect the panels. So I'm under our panels and it's time to connect these. These are four Solar Ever 455 watt split cell monoperk panels. My voltage open circuit is 49.31 on each of these. But remember, you need to calculate for your cold temperature voltage. So I think it's multiplying it by 1.1 and adding that to your voltage. So mine are probably about 54 plus 54 and a half. The max voltage on the EG412K mini split unit is 380 volts, so I am well under that. I'll probably add two more panels to this entire system in the future, but for now, right over 200 volts should be perfect. But for now, let's get these wired up. You're going to need a PV disconnect switch for this project. I've mounted mine right here under these panels, and I'm using an IMO brand. These are made in Austria. Again, as always, I'll have this and my panels linked below the video. Between the panels and my disconnect switch, I'm going to put an inline fuse on the positive red wire. I don't have a combiner box since this is just a single string. And the directions recommend running these just in series to the unit. It's still a little sunny out right now, so I'm not gonna connect this directly to the panel. Get your length of your PV wire correct, and then we'll connect it after dark. Actually, since I have the PV switch installed now, I can make my connections on the panels because it is disconnected here. And since this is a temporary structure, we're just gonna leave our wire here. I've got extra wire, but I will be doing more wire management later. Things aren't perfectly buttoned up yet, but we will wait until we are sure that everything works properly before doing that. It might not look like it on camera, but the sun is almost down. So I'm not gonna get any production out of these panels tonight. I'll see you in a second. Good morning and welcome back. It's a partly cloudy day out today. So we've got periods of sun coming on and off of the panels. I think that'll give the EG4 mini split a really good test to see how it cycles on and off with just DC power. Okay, here we go. Let's see if there's enough sun outside right at the moment. We've got power, so that's fantastic. We're down at 22 degrees Celsius. Now, I haven't figured out how to switch this to Fahrenheit, if you can at all. I couldn't find anything in the instruction booklet on how to do that. I think 23 degrees Celsius is about 75 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're gonna keep it, we're gonna go down as low as we possibly can. Actually, it says in the instruction manual to give it a five minute cooling test at the lowest, and that's 16. So that's, I'm guessing that's probably about 55 degrees maybe 60. Now you should run a heating test at the same time and crank it as high as it can go, put it on heat and run that for five minutes as well. So the question is, is if there isn't enough sunlight, will this just completely shut down or will it keep the fan going like this, but shut down the compressor, which obviously draws more amperage? Will that fan constantly run with very low voltage on the panels and everything else shut down? I'm just not quite sure. Just like with most mini splits, they are very quiet. That's on full blast and I can barely hear the fan, which is awesome. Now I've got to get to work insulating the garage door in this barn because it is the only thing that is not insulated. Okay, I just confirmed my own question. When that green light comes on next to the temperature reading, that means you've got enough sun for the compressor to kick on essentially. It was blowing out semi-cool air and I thought it was cold enough, but now once that kicked on, it's super cold. So it's working perfectly and that indicates whether you've got enough sunlight to be able to power the compressor in there. 
Okay, now there's one thing I dislike about this, and that is the manual. It's devoid of a lot of information. It's very small, very thin. Compared to something like a Mr. Cool unit, it has a very thick, full-sized book that you get, and it covers absolutely everything. This does not. So if you've installed mini splits before, you're gonna know what to do when you run into issues. But with this, you're not gonna find any answers. I really challenge EG4 to rewrite the manual and put all of the information in it. Well, that's it, friends. If you have any questions for me, please leave them for me in the comments section below. Now go check out these videos right here, which is our entire playlist of over 50 videos on our solar installs here on our homestead. Have a beautiful, blessed day. We'll see you next time.